Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. So you can do more than just get by. You can get ahead and stay ahead. Hillary Clinton striking a populist note as she rolled out her run for president. And it's time now for our Sunday group, Fox News senior political analyst Britt Hume, Jackie Kucinich of the Daily Beast, GOP strategist Carl Rove, and Fox News political analyst Juan Williams. Britt, what do you make of Clinton's first week as a formal candidate? Well, she's at a stage, I think, in her political life where she is who she is, and she is what she is, and it's not a member of the proletariat. Um, that doesn't mean that she couldn't have the common touch. She could, but I don't think she does. Uh, her husband had it. FDR, who was certainly a rich guy and a blue blood and all that, had that. Um, but Hillary doesn't. And she's doing her best to establish it in a way. I don't think it'll go very far, but I'm not sure how much it'll matter. She's got no real pressure for the uh, Democratic nomination. And, and you know, she's trying to present herself in a more favorable light than she apparently did in Iowa uh, eight years ago. And perhaps she'll succeed in that. But at the end of the day, she is who she is. Jackie, what struck you about Clinton's rollout? And, and I want to pick up on a, a question I was going back and forth with, with Bernie Sanders about. Is she going to have trouble campaigning as the champion of the middle class going up against big money when she and her husband have such a long history with, with $300,000 speeches and million dollar contributions, multi-million dollar contributions from foreign governments to the foundation? Yeah, I think I think it is a hard it's a hard um, move for her to pull because she was also making two hundred thousand dollars for speeches not too long ago. So that's where you're hearing this emphasis on the populist rhetoric. That's why you're hearing her say these things so she can kind of mitigate that that um, that idea. But I will say I think it was very telling when you when she was talking about hedge funders and she was talking about um, reducing their or, or how about how much they make. When you saw the Wall Street reaction, they were. They kind of were like, meh, they're not too worried about it. So unless there's action. Because what, they just think she's? They think it's going to be fine. They don't really think anything's going to happen. And they, that Hillary they, Clinton will be a friend of Wall Hillary Street. That Hillary Clinton, at the end of the day, will be a friend of Wall Street. There was also a lot of action on the Republican side with Senator Marco Rubio formally getting into the Republican race. And he took a shot at Hillary Clinton. Here it is. Just yesterday, a leader from yesterday. began a campaign for president by promising to take us back to yesterday. Carl, what are Rubio's chances in the field, especially against his political mentor, Jeb Bush? And when you look at 21 potential candidates up in New Hampshire this weekend, how do you sort out the Republican bill? How will it sort itself out? Well, he'll be a strong candidate. He's off to a strong start. He's clearly in the first tier. He's probably prepared himself better than anyone else for this moment. He get, went out and, and no one paid attention, but in 2013 and early 2014, he made seven substantive speeches about policy that showed he was educating himself about the issues, figuring out where he stood, and is launched into this with one of the most important things a candidate can have, which is an understanding of the issues that go that, that together make up a message. So he's off to a strong start and will be in the first tier. But how do you sort out 20 one candidates, I think by the end of the day, we're going to have really 15 or 16. You and 15 or 16 declared candidates. 15 or 16 declared candidates on the ballots in the four states that begin this process in February. And I think it's still going to be confused. I think by the end of February, we're likely to be down to five or six candidates who have tended to be towards the top in these four contests and seem to have the message and the resources to fight it on through. But it ain't going to be easy and particularly going to be difficult when we come around to debates. The first debate is in August. And how is the Republican on National Fox News. on Fox News and how's the Republican National Committee going to trim? They've said they want to have a reasonable number of participants and they're going to set triggers based on the uh, standing in the polls and the uh, amount of money raised, and that's going to keep some of the more um, uh, flamboyant uh, candidates that we have from being on the stage. And so we're going to have an ugly mess as we get closer to the August. Uh, Let me ask this. you about before I bring in one one other candidate, Chris Christie, who kind of reemerged. This week made a strong speech about about reforming entitlements, especially Social Security. Is he 
How much trouble is he in, and to what degree do you think he can breathe life into a campaign, which in 2013, after he was reelected, he was the front runner, but he's had a tough year. Yeah. Look, his campaign, he's got to campaign while things are still being, you know, the sword of Damocles is hanging over his head. Until that U.S. attorney says, here's my final decision and we're done, uh, he, he's, he's, he's got difficulties. I thought what was interesting about this is it shows two things about him. One is he's willing to be bold. He went out there and said, here's specific things that I do to tackle entitlements. And second of all, it shows that he is not panicking. He understands that his fate is going to be determined largely by what this uh, U.S. attorney does. And in the meantime, he's not going to panic. He knows that he's in a hole and he's going to dig his way out of the hole by by being bold and by being straightforward and, and direct. I thought it was a, a good recovery. He's clearly not in the first tier of the candidates, though, where he was a year ago. Uh, one, I want to switch subjects with you, and I want to ask you about the, the holdup of the confirmation vote uh, on the nomination of Loretta Lynch to be the first black woman attorney general. Uh, President Obama went after the Republicans hard on that this week. It's gone too far. Enough. Enough. Call Loretta Lynch for a vote. Get her confirmed. Put her in place. Let her do her job. Now, Lynch was nominated almost six months ago, six months. back in November. I, I guess I had two questions. One, what do you think of the holdup of the nomination? And two, do you think it's something that Republicans, that Democrats can use effectively against Republicans and make them pay a political price for holding up the nomination of a black woman to a top position? Well, and the answer to your first question is, I think this is more political than racial. But, yes, there is a big risk for the Republicans in a race, especially with Hillary Clinton as the likely Democratic nominee and a contest that will focus on the possibility of the first woman president, to be six months suspending up the nomination of a black woman who is eminently qualified. I think both sides say that she's been a skilled prosecutor, tough on crime, tough on terrorism, just terrific. And she's being held up. The second risk, again, in a year of women is the abortion issue in terms of the human trafficking bill is what they're, is causing this delay. And Mitch they're holding Ma up her nomination until they settle this issue about a human trafficking Correct. Bill. And what Mitch McConnell has said, because now there are five Republicans who have said they will vote with the Democrats to confirm her. So if there is a vote, as you saw President Obama calling for, she'll be confirmed. This is all about Mitch McConnell then saying, let's hold up on this vote till we get this other issue settled. And that, again, creates something that Democrats will be able to use to beat Republicans about the head in terms of the war on women. Let me just ask you, Carl, we've got about a minute left. At a time when Republicans want to show that they're reaching out to minorities, does it make sense, political sense, to hold up this nomination? Uh, yeah, uh, no, it doesn't from that perspective. But here's the other perspective. The Democrats are using the human trafficking bill's language that has been there for 40 years regarding the use of federal funds for abortion. They're saying our price for passing this bill, the high language in the, uh, language in the trafficking bill is you got to remove it. And so the Democrats, the Republicans have got very few levers to say to the Democrats, we want to keep in place the language that has been approved on a bipartisan basis for 40 years. That's what this that's kerfuffle is all the, about. You know, that stuff is lost well, I, in the I get, weeds. It, I get it. I get okay, it. It gets right. lost in the weeds, but nonetheless, it is an po important point of principle, and it's important to remember, Democrats are trying to undo a 40-year bipartisan agreement that no federal funds will be used for abortion so in a bill that has to do with trafficking. Would you continue to hold up? Well, it, look, I'm not a senator, and I, I, I see it both ways, uh, but, but the Republicans in the Senate are trying to, to do this, and the Democrats are trying to play to the abortion crowd oh. by saying, let's undo the language that's been this? there for 40 right. years. The votes are there to confirm her. When this is straightened out, she will be confirmed. And presently, she'll be our attorney general. And the vote's by an overwhelming vote. And all of the rest of this will recede into the background as detail. And we'll, I don't think it'll be around long enough as an issue to affect things one way or the other. And Democrats don't want to have a vote in the Senate to undo the language. They want the Republicans to remove the language so they don't have to go on the record saying, I'm in favor of using but federal Carl, funds for abortion. The, the you think Joe Manchin, you think Joe Manchin wants to vote for that? No, he wants the governor. No, well, they didn't hide they it. The they Democrats, it was right it. there in the bill, it and the Democrats sponsored it. voted for it. And now oh, they're Juan, punishing this Juan, black woman. That's crazy. Juan, Juan, it really gets, it's dangerous for you to keep doing this kind of stuff. And me, for me having to correct you, the language was in the bill. It the Democratic hidden. sponsor, no it wasn't. The Democrat okay. sponsor admitted, admits it was you in the bill what? and she we, voted for it. This is why God invented commercials. You can continue to fight <laughs> this. We're going to take a break here.